Uh, low grade 10, we're going to talk about loops now. Loops. Why do we have loops? Well, we repeat things because we don't want to have to write code over and over again. To give an example, I'll give an example just now. First of all, there's three different types of loops. For loop, a while loop, and a repeat loop. We're going to do the for loop now for a while before we do the other two. So don't worry about the other two for now. Just know that a for loop is going to repeat code a number, a fixed number of times. For an example, let's say I want to display a whole lot of stars, okay, in the rich edit, this rich edit one. In the button click event, I'm going to display stars. I'm saying rich edit one dot lines dot add. I'm going to put in five stars. Okay. Then I'm going to go and put in four stars for the next instruction. Wait, let's start with one and we'll go up to five. One star, and then we're going to display two stars, and then we're going to display three stars, then we're going to display four stars, and then we will display five stars. One, two, three, four, five. What do you think that's going to happen? Let's run the program and see. <clears throat> Click the buttons. Can you see it makes a little like a little right angle triangle? That was a lot of code to write. We can actually do it a different way. We can say, remember it was five, eh? We can use a for loop, and for a for loop, we always have to have a for loop counter that's going to count how many times we want. We know we can have five different lines here that we want to add, eh? 4. K equals 1 to 5. This is the structure of our for loop. We say an integer equals 1 to 5. Do, which means we're telling the process to do this five times, please. Then we're going to say Richard at one dot lines dot add. We're not going to say that. No, we're going to build a string of stars. This star equals a I'm first going to make it empty and I must declare s star as a variable string variable there we go and I'm going to make it an empty string and inside here I'm going to say s star equals the previous s star plus a star Going to join a star to the string called s star five times. I'm going to delete all this long code that I wrote over there. As you can see, this is only three lines. Okay, we have to have two variables. We have to have a for loop counter going from one to five, and we have to have a star so we can build a string inside this loop. Now we're only doing one thing in the for loop. Okay, so we don't have to have begin and end there. I'm going to run the program and see what happens. Click the button. Oh, I haven't displayed. <laughs> I didn't I didn't write rich edit. I've got to display a star. <laughs> Remember, it's going to be building. But it's going to actually build a star into a string. Rich, it's not going to do what I want it to do. We'll see just now. Rich edit one dot lines dot add a star. It's actually going to just join five stars together in one single line. So let's go and run the program and see if it does that. Oops. Uh, oh, semicolon missing. I always forget my semicolon. Okay, and let's run and click the button. And like I said, there's only five stars there. So that's not giving us what we want, eh? So what we have to do is display each time. So in my begin and end, I'm actually going to build the star and then display it in the rich edit. So there I'm building the first star and I'm displaying it. Then I'm adding another star to it, then I'm displaying it. Then I'm adding another star to the to S star and then I'll display it. Then I add the third star, display it. Then a fourth star, display it. Add the fifth star and display it. So I think that will give us what we want. Let's go and see. Run the program. 
I'm going to click this button and there it is. Yeah, it gives us what we want. So we look at that code and we study it carefully. What if we want the stars to be upside down? The, di the, the, the triangle must go from five stars down to one. What do we do then? Well, all you do is this. You say for k equals five down two one do um actually no it's not that sorry my bad one two five we want to do it at five we start with five stars one two three four five we can actually go and delete a star from a star each time but before we do that we must display So our, well, could have, you know, we do, we can go from five down to one, but we're not going to because we're going to delete a star. So we'll display the five stars and then we're going to delete a star. We'll say delete from a star one character, starting at one, character number one. That is our delete procedure. You just write the word delete and in brackets, you, what are you deleting from? Where are you going to start deleting? And how many characters are you going to delete? So that's that little procedure. So I'm going to run the program and see if that goes from five down to one star. And there it does. Now what did we do? We used a loop to do this. A for loop. Now we're going to look at our um, discussion here of the for loop. The structure is that you use a for loop and a a for loop counter from 1 to 6. Now just like in case structure you can use ordinal data types. You can use char for c char equals a to z or you can use for r count equals 1 to 6 like this and then you do things and you show a message so many times. Uh, for instance let's put this code in here in our program. I'll say for r for k equals 1 to 6. Okay. And let's go and display K. And we're going to display K here into string K. We'll see what K actually is. Each time we run the loop, K is going to change. First it'll be 1, then it'll be 2, then it'll be 3, then it'll be 4, then 5, and 6. Okay? So we're going to show that now in the rich edit. And we're only doing one thing, so I don't have to use begin and end. Only doing one thing in this for loop. Run the program, click the button. I know we're going to get our stars, but down over here we have one, two, three, four, five, six. See, there it is. So I displayed all of that. What if we wanted to go for k equals six down to one? So I'll just copy this and I'll put it in over here. For k equals six, you can go in reverse order of numbers down to one. From a high number down to a low number. Let's go and see what happens now. So I'm going to run the program. Don't forget that all of these. Oh, I'm not finished. I didn't end there. Anyway, all of these loops are going to display in the rich edit because I never changed. I never cleared the rich edit. So I'll just make the rich edit a bit larger so we can see better. <coughs> Hit the button. So we we'll see our reverse tiles and then one to six. There it is. And then we have six, five, four, three, two, one. So that worked fine. Okay, now what about A to Z, A to F or A to G or whatever? I should actually add lines in between there eh, because we do want to um, we don't want them to be on top of each other. So I'll add an empty line after that loop and add an empty line. And remember this rich edit lines dot add empty string is not part of the for loop, okay? Because the for loop has only got one line in it. Let's do a char data type for our loop. C char colon char. You don't have to use C char, you can see C letter or something or C let. So I'll say for C 
CLIT equals just an easy one. Um, let's make it G2. And you must use capitals. If you're going to use capitals, use capitals. G2, GHRJK. Do, and we go and display C letter. Let's display C lit. Okay. So I'm going to run the program. And we're going to display the character there. Oh, my Richard is ready. There we go. C J R C G H R J K. There it is. Then, what if they were small letters? <coughs> I'll be running out of space here. Yeah? Right. Oh. Okay. Um, small letters. Small letter A to small letter D. And there we go, A, B, C, D. I know you probably can't see it so well on your screen, maybe. And then, what if you want to do a down to? For C letter is K down to. down to F, say, from K down to F, or A down, or no, you can't for A down to, you got to say D down to A or something. So there it is, K, J, R, H, G, E, G, F, sorry. So there it is, the alphabet in reverse order. So that's a cool trick to know. So you can use a chart on a type in your for loop, or a K, or an integer. Either an integer or char. So those are the tricks we can use. And um, so they're discussing a bit of the for loop, the general syntax and the flow chart. The flow chart for the for loop, you use a diamond, you ask if, yes or no. Um, and it loops around, you'll see that the arrow goes from this yes, no block all the way and then it goes around. If you see this in a flow chart, you know you've got a loop, a repetition. Okay, it's repeating, it's going around. You see the direction of the arrows? You can go that way and you go up there. You know there's a loop there. So that's the flow chart. Um, showing the, and they discussed the down to. Now we're going to analyze these four loops over here. Right. How many times will the instruction in the for loop execute if M is greater than N? <coughs> If M, M to N, well, the for loop will not uh, operate. Because, for instance, what if I make um, this number 6 from for K equals 6 to 5? That's what they mean. Will it run? Let's have a look. We'll click the button, and you see that loop didn't run. The stars didn't display because I said from 6 to 5. That was for displaying the stars. So, naught is the answer there. So if k if m is greater than n, in other words, this number is greater than this this number, and using two, then it won't work. The loop won't run. If m is equal to n, guess what? How many times will it run? It will run once. So I'm gonna say for k equals one to one, or if k equals five to five, we'll get. We'll get the stars there. One line. Okay. One one line. The five stars. If it is five to five, we'll still get that Richard on the lines that add. Only once. It'll only be one line in the rich edit. <coughs> Let's go and click the button. There you see it's one line of stars in the rich edit. The Richard only displays once. Remember the code inside here is repeated the number of times that you decide that that for loop is going to. If it goes from for k equals 5 to 5, it'll only be once. k equals 1 to 5, then you'll have five rich edit on lines of add statements. These these instruction, instructions will repeat five times in this case. 
and then we're going to go to the next one. The next question is if m is less than n, well, it'll be n minus n plus 1. Let's say this is 4. How many times will this thing, if you're going from 4 to 5? We think it's 1, but it's not. It's actually going to be 2. See? Two lines in the text, um, the rich edit. So from 4 to 5, it's get the, the loop is going to execute two times. So it'll be 5, m, the answer over here will be n minus m plus 1. And that'll be the number of times that the for loop will execute. Yeah, tricky, eh? Next one, consider the following code. Our num is naught. Okay, is 50 down to 47 do? Increment i num. What will be displayed by LBL answer once this code is executed? Now take note carefully over here, there's no begin and end inside this increment around this in this for loop. This code here is completely separate to the for loop. So guess what? Naught will be displayed because I num is naught. And then here it says LBL answer dot caption equals interesting I num naught. This LBL answer dot caption is not part of the for loop. So the for loop will do all of this. Sorry, I'm telling fibs here now. Increment. The for loop is going to do this. 50 down to 47. Sorry. Talking nonsense. Um, the for loop will happen. Okay. Increment. I num will be incremented from 50 down to 47. So that will be, what is 50 minus 47? Um, until it gets to 47. 50, that, yeah, that's 3. So it will be executed four, time, uh, 4 times. Let's put this code in and we'll prove it. So I num will be 4. And then you'll only have one display in the label. And that will be the number four. Let's go and see if it is true. So our number is naught, and then our number is incremented from 50 down to 47. So let's go and do it for k equals, uh, let's go here, yeah, 50 down to. 47 and if we say num equals naught over here we make an num variable there just to be the same as the thing where's my down to there it is I'm going to set num equal to naught <coughs> and we have to increment num and then we'll display num into string on um, in the rich edit, okay. So remember this code. This is basically the code from fifty down to forty-seven. So for i, oh, let's have a look at it again. Is it k? Yeah. For k equals fifty down to forty-seven. Fifty down to forty-seven. We're incrementing r num for that uh, that amount of times. Now, I said the answer was 4, eh? Oops, why is it? Uh, interest, reach is not that interest. Oh, semicolon missing. I always miss my semicolons. Right, click the button. And there it is, 4. I was correct. 50 minus 47 is 3. And you've got to add one extra. And we get 4. Right, let's have a look at the next one. Consider the following code. Sum is naught, total is 1. And rnum1 to rnum2. We don't know what rnum1 or rnum2 is. We're adding rnum1 to the sum. And we're adding rnum2 to the total. And they say displaying the total. Okay, what will be displayed if LBL, by LBL answer? Once this goes, if num has a value of 5, and num 1 is 5, and num 2 is 7. So, num 1 is 5, and num 2 is 7. So from 5 to 7, 7 plus 2, so 3 times we are going to be adding a sum. Okay, um, 5 to the sum. 
five, 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 five. But you know what? Um, this whole it's actually quite tricky. It's best to put the code in seven times by seven. Ah, well, these I num one and I num two don't change. They're going to stay five and seven. It's K that's going to change. So we don't use K inside here. We don't, you know, well, you can, but you don't change the value of K. But I num one and I num two are never going to change. I sum is going to be multiples of five. We're going to add five each time. And we know that from five to seven is three. So it's I sum will be 15 and I total will be we're multiplying seven, three, seven times seven times seven. One times seven and seven times seven and two times seven. So it's three. One, seven, two, seven. One times seven and then seven times seven and then, yeah, seven to the power of three. Which is a bit tricky, eh? But let's go put the code in because, you know, why not? Let's see if I can copy and paste this. <coughs> I don't know if I can. Ha! Huh? No, it doesn't work. Right, so let's go and do it. Um, I summon I total. Let's make another button. This one's getting messy here. Right, button. I'm going to make I sum. VARK. I sum. I total. R num one and R num two or integers. Whoops, excuse the capitals. Right, and we're gonna say four K equals I I num one to R num two do we make R sum equal to naught and I total equal to one. Now for the first activity, we want R num 1 equal to 5 and R num 2 equal to 7. And we're doing two things in begin and end. I sum, I sum equals I sum, we're adding 5, I num 1 and I total equals our total plus our num2 and we go and display rich uh, <coughs> rich edit one dot rounds dot add into string our sum plus into string our Total. I'm just trying to do it as fast as possible. Oh, yeah, that didn't work. Okay, so I'm just displaying those two things in the rich edit, one after the other. I num I sum and I total. Okay, so I've made I num one equal to five and I num two for seven. We're going from five to seven. We're adding five to I sum and we multiplying. Our total by our num two. Five we're multiplying by seven, our total by seven and we're adding Yeah, you got that from that other activity and I missed out something obviously. Oh, which added one. Okay, oh, my program's not giving me the errors that I need. It's not doing error checking for me pre error checking of my code, so that makes it a bit slower. Never mind, here we go. Um, let's click the button to 15 and 343. So we added five uh, three times. Remember we added five three times. Let's look at the code. If um, our num one is five, and I'm to seven, the loop's going to execute three times. Just add one, and then seven times seven times seven. I can go and put it here, equals seven times seven times seven, which will give us 343. So that's more. There we go. That's that one. Next one. What will 
be in alveol answer, one says code is equal to anum, one has a value of five, anum two is a value of seven, and the begin and end is removed. Well, our total will stay, well, no, our total will be multiplied by seven, and our sum will be 15. Because you take the begin and end away, you're only going to be looping this one. Our sum is going to be going, you're going to add five, three times. But our total is just going to be the number seven. We'll prove it. So let's take the begin and end away. And this is what will be. Separate. That's a good test. Run the program and let's see what happens. And that is correct. R num one R sum is fifteen and R total is seven. Just like I said. Right, so you can try and do that by yourself and I'll keep this program for you on the in the data files.